Our scripture passage this morning comes from the 19th chapter of Luke's Gospel, and it's going to contain verses 1 through 10, and it, and it reads as following. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through town. A man there named Zacchaeus, a, a ruler among the tax collectors, was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he couldn't because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed up a sycamore tree so he could see Jesus, who was about to pass that way. When Jesus came to that spot, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down at once. I must stay in your home today. So Zacchaeus came down at once, happy to welcome Jesus. Everyone who saw this grumbled, saying, He is gone to be the guest of a sinner. Zacchaeus stopped and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anyone, I will repay them four times as much. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this household because he too is a son of Abraham. The human one, the son of man, came to seek and to save the lost. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. O oh God, you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I've shared many times about the, the shenanigans that my brothers and I would get in throughout the neighborhood and the trouble that, that we caused my parents and I know every other parent in the neighborhood. Uh, I've, I've joked before uh, and jokingly told folks that Carrie and I don't have kids because I'm afraid they'll turn out like me. Um, this week was one of those times when I was reading through the story, uh, the, the scripture passage for the week, and, and it, it began to bring back a, a flood of memories. Most of us, when we hear the passage that was just read, we, we don't think of anything past the, the children's song. Zacchaeus was a wee little, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. Zacchaeus, come down from that tree. I don't, I don't remember the rest of the song. I didn't pay attention a lot in Sunday school as a kid. Hence the comment before about terrorizing the neighborhood. But, but I think what, what, what brought back a memory to me was, uh, was actually a little bit of jealousy. You see, Zacchaeus had figured out, figured out a way to make it uh, socially acceptable to, to climb things as an adult. I loved climbing a, a tree as a kid. It was one of my, my favorite things to do. In fact, I would often try to get as high as possible no matter what situation I was in. And, and mom would often tell me that, that, that climbing things is not always the best use of energy or time or, or probably not even safe sometimes. Uh, but I did it anyways, and I loved to climb trees. I loved the adventure of seeing how high I could go. I loved to, to get up top before anybody else could. Because once I got up to the top, nobody else could get there. It was my spot. Anybody else ever like to do that in trees? Yeah. Don't climb trees without your parents' permission. You're welcome. I think I liked it because it was exciting, but more than exciting, it was safe. You could get up in the tree and nobody could do anything because they were down there and you were up here. That, uh, that passion for climbing things, uh, I, I found a way to make it socially acceptable. I stopped climbing trees and started climbing rocks. And, and all through high school and college, I was a, an avid rock climber multiple days a week. And, one of my favorite places in college is a little state park, a little state recreation area on the way up from, from Abingdon to, to Lebanon, and it's called Hidden Valley. And if you don't know where it is, you don't know where it is, and you're not going to find it. There's one little square sign. It's a lake on top of a mountain, and before you head back down to the lake, there's a, uh, a rock outcropping. And there's a little Vietnamese man who owns the access land to to that, that rock and, and his, uh, his biceps are about the size of my thighs of just pure muscle. All he does is, is climb all day long. 
and, uh, and he set um, anchors in this rock so that, that folks who want to climb, they can, uh, they can do so in a, in a way called sport climbing and they can hook in carabiners as they're going and, and, and run the rope through it so that it's only slightly dangerous. And if you've never climbed like that, one of the things that you would do is, is when, when you would get to the, the top of something, there would be some anchor bolts up top, and there would be two of them, and, 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 and hopefully they would be good bolts after you've gotten to the top, or otherwise you were in trouble. That was a joke. But seriously, you want them to be good bolts. And, and you would get to the top, and, and sometimes you would hook up a system, other times you would go through the bolts, depending on which ones they were, and... And you would get up there and, and you would take your harness and you would hook two locking carabiners into those anchors and you would tie the rope off on your leg and then you would untie your knot. And there was a moment up on top of that rock where there was nothing. Nothing but you and the rock and God. I really liked those moments. In the, the hecticness of college, the, the pressure, the stress of college. A little bit of stress, right Sam? A little bit. I would take those moments to just get away. No cell phone service, no radio. The next closest human being was 150 feet below me. The next closest human being beyond him was, was miles and miles away. It's just a nice little bit of separation. Sometimes we, we separate ourselves from this world because we want a time of renewal. We're doing so in, in prayer. Other times we separate ourselves from this world because that seems like the easy thing to do. Amen. And I think as Zacchaeus was journeying that day, that might have been the situation he was in. You see, Scripture tells us that he was the chief tax collector. He was head among the tax collectors. He figured out a way to get money from the people who took money from people for a living. Great pyramid scheme. And nobody liked tax collectors. And even the tax collectors didn't like Zacchaeus. You can imagine he got good at separating himself. The, the, the way that we normally think of Zacchaeus is, is as a wee little man, right? We think of him as, as short. But, but the word that, that is describing Zacchaeus there, it could very easily mean short. He could have been someone who was of short stature, but it also could have meant that he was young. It could have meant that he was culturally insignificant. People didn't care that he was there. And that's why the crowd couldn't see him. Maybe they were really close together. And, and you know when you get close to somebody and, and, and there's somebody who's trying to sneak through and you're not going to let them through. You can't get through. You've got to stay back there. And, and you, you shouldered up with somebody and, and, and the crowd and, and Zacchaeus was wanting to get through but nobody likes Zacchaeus, right? And if you really don't like somebody, are you going to give them your spot in front of the line? Probably not. And so Zacchaeus was a little frustrated because the crowd was just kind of butting him out and they weren't even giving him the attention that he desired. That was his difficulty. He might have been short, he might have been young, but I think more than anything it was the crowd who was intentionally blocking him out. Have you ever known that you were going somewhere where there were going to be a lot of people and maybe you were just in a mood where you didn't want to deal with a lot of people. And so you didn't go. Or maybe there was just one or two people who were going to be there that you didn't want to be there and so you didn't go. It was Zacchaeus' life every day. Because no one liked him. So imagine every day you're walking out of your door knowing that no one was going to be nice to you. That no one was going to smile at you. Because they didn't like him. Because he had been mean. So it was a big risk going to see Jesus that day. What would people say? What would people do? How would they react? He wasn't the most popular and he certainly was not the most righteous man in town. No one can be privately righteous while participating in a 
program and profiting from a program that robs and crushes others. I bet he thought that Jesus wouldn't even give him a second thought, just like the crowd. And so he did what he was good at. He separated himself. He went on ahead and he climbed up a tree because it was safe. He wouldn't have to be around the people that he didn't like and he was far enough away that he wouldn't have any accidental encounters with Jesus. He was somewhere where he could observe without actually interacting. He was somewhere where he could be a fan without being a follower. You remember, sometimes we think of, of Zacchaeus going there to, to worship Jesus or to, uh, to, to pay honor. or He was excited about Jesus. Scripture said he was trying to see who Jesus was. He didn't even have a concept of who this traveling rabbi was and what he was about to do for this world, much less what he was about to do in Zacchaeus' own life. But his curiosity... His desire to see this one called Jesus changed Zacchaeus' life forever. He didn't know the power of his action climbing up in that tree, but Jesus saw his eyes. And he saw through that pride, and he saw through that hurt, and he probably even saw through that, well, I'm just curious. And he saw that there was a seed of salvation within Zacchaeus' heart that was ready to spring forth and come to life. He saw a life that was patiently waiting to do incredible things. I don't know about you, but, but when I was playing outside, when I would be up in trees, I would often get really dirty. I would have grass stains and, and dirt stains on my on my pants, I, I would have been up in trees and so I've got leaves tucked into shirts, between shirts and twigs in my hair. And I would come down and, and mom would just say, just go in the laundry room. <laughs> just, just go. I certainly wasn't in any shape to welcome someone home. I'm going to guess that Zacchaeus was not physically dirty. Thomas, see if there's a, a picture uh, of a tree on, uh, on that slide. A, a sycamore tree in, in that area of the world would have been uh, very different than a sycamore tree here. It would have had uh, nice kind of low hanging branches. It would have been perfect to observe. You can imagine climbing on that. Zacchaeus probably didn't get physically dirty climbing that tree that day, but I imagine that up in that tree he felt spiritually dirty. Yet Jesus saw him where he was. He saw him for who he was, and he called him down to be in relationship with him. Now growing up, when I got called down out of trees, it didn't end well. Because it was normally mom or dad uh, calling one or all three boys and it didn't end well for me or Wes or Jay. And I imagine Zacchaeus thinking about all the possibilities that awaited him on the ground. That Jesus, this, this traveling rabbi, this great teacher, he had heard how bad of a man Zacchaeus was and he was about to get dealt with. That the crowd would ridicule him as soon as they saw him climbing down out of this tree you see, the, the sycamore tree, it produces a, a, a fig fruit. But it's not a normal fig fruit. It, it's a, and it's an inferior fig. It's not, someone of, uh, it's not a fig that someone of Zacchaeus' social stature would have um, been around. It's, it was the poor people's fig tree. And so Zacchaeus, this rich man, is coming out of the poor tree. Do you see... Do you see what he had to do with himself to see Jesus? And he's, he's coming down because Jesus has just invited himself over for dinner. To the house of probably the most hated man in town. Can you imagine all of those scenarios running through Zacchaeus' head? From tree to ground. 
from, from separation to relationship, from isolation to Jesus. Something changes in Zacchaeus. It's like once Zacchaeus took that, that first step out of the tree, once he, he trusted in that call of Jesus in his life, he realized that he was on the right path. He realized that from that point on, he was journeying, but he no longer had to journey alone because he was with Jesus. And something changed inside of him. He was happy to welcome Jesus into his home. He was happy to welcome Jesus into his life and into his heart. And when he did that, he did something very out of ordinary for a tax collector especially one as successful as he was, he made a public announcement about giving away his money. He called out to Jesus. He said, look, Lord, I give you half of everything I've got. 50% right now. And on top of that 50%, I'm going to pay back any wrongs that I've done to people. If I've taken anything from someone unjustly, I'm going to pay that back and not just pay it back. I'm going to pay it back fourfold. In that society, when someone would, would volunteer restitution, that they would do so by paying back the original amount plus 20%. We hear about that in, in Leviticus 6.5 and Numbers 5.7. But, but when someone is commanded, when someone is commanded or required to give back what they've taken there, to pay back at least double, and sometimes four or five times as much as they've taken. But Zacchaeus willingly, he voluntarily offers half of what he has and then he volunteers to pay back what he's taken fourfold. Something incredible is happening inside of his life. This offer to pay back and, and to give to the poor is evidence of the radicality of the grace and the power that is working in his heart and in his life. It's evidence of the good news that Jesus has told him. That salvation has come to him, even him, someone that people hate. The one that no one likes. Jesus tells him that he is a son of Abraham. Imagine being a part of a community, but someone telling you for your entire life that you're not really a part of that community and they don't want to welcome you. And a point in your life when you're most vulnerable, when you're most in need, someone comes along and says, you really are a brother. You are a friend. You are a son, a daughter. And I welcome you. Can you imagine the, the relief that Zacchaeus felt, the burden that was lifted off his shoulders? Something significant had just happened and he responded in a significant way. He had a conversion experience, but it was in no way a, a private conversion experience. It changed everything about his whole life. Not only would his household be affected, Scripture says that salvation came to him and his household that day, but the poor who would be beneficiaries of his conversion, as well as the people whom he had defrauded, they all benefited. His salvation was personal and social and economic and domestic. That word salvation does not just mean being saved as we think about it in our context, but, but in the way that, that Luke was offering it to us, it means that, that Zacchaeus was made whole. It means that Zacchaeus was healed. It means that Zacchaeus was made well. That Zacchaeus was restored to the point in his life that God created him to be at. The story is showing us that salvation is not confined to the condition of the soul, but, but the life of Jesus affects our whole lives. This wasn't an accident. Verse 10, the very end of that passage says, the Son of Man, the human one, came to seek and to save the lost. It wasn't an accident that Jesus stopped in at Zacchaeus' house it wasn't a delay or a detour to his journey to Jerusalem, to the cross. No, that was the very purpose of his journey that day. To seek and to save the lost. That was his purpose and his mission then, and that is his purpose and his mission now. He sees us where we are. 
He sees us for who we are. He sees us in the trees that we have climbed in our lives, each and every one of us. And He calls us down. And He brushes the, the dirt and the leaves and the twigs off of our, our shoulders and, and takes it out of our hair. And, and He calls us out of a life of separation and into a life of a relationship. He humbles Himself and He, he sits around a table with, with us, broken, sinful people as we are. The one who's the Messiah. The Christ, the Son of God. He's talking to you and to me. He calls us down and through His love we are made new. We are made well. We are healed. We are made whole. Through His love we are saved. And that changes everything. Today, Jesus calls us down out of that tree where we are. He calls us by name and He says, Carrie, and Will, and Max. He says, Warren, and Mary, and Andy. And He calls us into relationship with Him. And He gathers us not around any just insignificant table, but He invites us to His table. He invites us to break bread, not of just any ordinary meal, but of a sacred meal. He calls us by name and He allows us to offer Him the opportunity to, to accept the hospitality of our hearts. He may not, be to, may not be here physically to come and eat lunch with you, but He is here ready to eat lunch with you in your heart, to live with you each and every day. He calls you sister and brother and son and daughter. Anytime we share this meal, we remember the night that He gathered with His disciples. We remember that night that He gave Himself up for us. How He took a loaf of bread, blessed it and gave thanks to God. How He broke it and he gave it to his disciples, to his friends, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And how when the supper was over, he took one of the cups, blessed it and gave thanks to God, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Will you pray with me? Our prayer, Lord, is that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here. And on these gifts of bread and wine, May they be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by His blood. But God, call us all now in our hearts into a relationship with You. Call us down out of the trees of life. And God, hear our prayers now silently as we confess our sins and our shortcomings before You. for inviting us to the table. Thank you for calling us by name. Bless this meal. 
that as we partake in it, your Holy Spirit might do a work in our hearts and in our lives. That others might come to know of your love and grace in us and through us. We ask this in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.